Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just confess of a truth that our God is bigger and greater than what people say? Why don't you just say it like you truly mean it? Lord God, I thank you because you are greater, you are mightier, you are higher, you are marvelous, you are excellent, you are my Lord, you are greater than what people say. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise this hour. Thank you for your presence in our midst already. Thank you for the fragrance of your love, of your peace. Thank you because of a truth, you are our living God. We appreciate you. We exalt you. Accept all thanks in the name of Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior. Have before you this afternoon, O oh God. We want to share something that is very important in the journey of our calling, of our purpose in life. And that is the essence of our worship. Jehovah, we pray today that you give us understanding in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will come down mightily and begin to touch hearts, begin to touch minds. Begin to touch situations and let us know that of a truth, our worship is meaningful. Our worship is important in the name of Jesus. I come against every power that is not of God, every buying and selling, every name that might want to raise up their ugly head against the holiness, against the righteousness, against the power against the presence, against the, your, your knowledge in our midst this afternoon. We pull them down in the name of Jesus. We pull them down in the name of Jesus. We pull them down. We join our anointing together as one body of Christ. And we rebuke every power that is not of God in Jesus' name. Speak through me this afternoon, O oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sit down majestically in the presence of God Almighty. This afternoon, I want us to talk about something that is very, very important. And I believe that after this ministration, the Lord will begin to do something new in our lives you begin to work in a way that will marvel at us. That when people see, they will begin to ask you, where do you fellowship? Where do you worship? What is going on in your life? What is it about you that has changed in the mighty name of Jesus? Because worship is what God wants us to do as a church. There are five things that God expects us to do as a church or a purpose for our existence our purpose in life is not just to come warm up the chairs you know it's not just to come dress up it's not just to come and ask him ask him ask him there is a reason why he has kept you and i alive till today many people from their mother's womb they, they couldn't make it or they didn't make it Many people, it's not because they are better or we are better than them, but it's just because of the mercy of God upon our lives. So we need to understand some concepts or some principles that God wants us to do or to have so that our blessing can be full, so that the manifestation of the glory of God in our lives can be revealed. Amen. The first thing is worship. And that is what we are going to talk about today. The other thing is ministry. What is your purpose? What is your calling? The next thing is evangelism. Because when you have a relationship with God, it will enable you to know your ministry or your purpose in life. Why are you alive? Why am I created? Why did God decided to bring me from Nigeria or from Ghana or from my, the family that I came from. 
Is it about my career? Is it about my education? Is it about my gift or my talent? No. He gave us an assignment for us to go ye into the world. That is the great commission that God has given to you and I. That anywhere we find ourselves, we need to continue to talk about the purpose of God in your life. You need to be able to stand and testify to the goodness and the glory of God in your life. Look at us sitting down today. Since January till today, I don't know how many of us can stand up and say at my place of work, I was able to share, I was able to pray, I was able to comfort, I was able to counsel, I was able to minister to someone. Then the next thing is baptism. And the last one is discipleship. So what is worship? Worship is the feeling or expression of reverence or adoration for a deity. When you look in the world, the people that serve all this little God, if you see the way they reference their God, if you see the way they carry their God, some of them, when you go to their house, they will tell you, you cannot even wear the shoe inside their house, no matter how small, how big it is, because they have something inside that they believe in. But our own God is already in us. Amen. He lives in us. And that is why we carry him everywhere we go. Have you seen the Muslims, even at the airport, when, we have, when they have meeting with presidents, when it is time for them to pray, when it is time for them to, do, to give harms, when it is time for them to do whatever they have to do, they do it diligently. Because they understand their worship. They understand their calling. They understand what God wants them to do. And when we talk about worship, it's about relationship. If we look into the book of Genesis, I'm just going to paraphrase, especially Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. When God visited Adam and Eve in, in the garden, they were able to communicate. They fellowship together. They worship together. But after the sin came in, everything changed. And that is why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price for you and I. But how do we see him? How do we acknowledge him? Why do we come together? Is it just to come to church and show off? Is it just to come to church and talk to our friends that we didn't see for the whole week? We are in this sanctuary, in this temple of God, to worship. Amen. Because there is a presence that as soon as you step in, in the, to the house of God, the new atmosphere, everything changed. You have come because of an expectation. You have come because you are determined, coming from your house, that I'm going to consecrate myself. I'm going to prepare myself because I'm going to meet with my God. You are not coming to meet with the bishop. You have not, come in to, you have not prepared yourself because you want bishop to see you. Yes. Sometimes you might want to talk to him. But a very good example is in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 5. And that is the first time in the, in the Old Testament or in the Bible that we mention worship. Our father Abraham, he was filled with expectation. When the Lord told him to take his only son, Isaac, to take him up to the mountain and give him as a sacrifice. But what did he tell his servants? He told them. He said, wait for me. I'm going. When you are leaving the house, do you tell your husband, your wife, your children that I am going to meet with my God? I am not going there because of anybody. So if you need anything from me, ask me now. I don't want to disturb you and I don't want you to disturb me. Because I want to go. 
before the, the almighty God. I want to go to the presence of the one who has preserved my life till today. I'm going before the one who sees me in secret and who can only reward me in public. I am going before the one who has destined or purpose for my life that has to come to fusion. I am going before the one that no matter what the doctors of this world have said, is the only one that can heal me. Is the only one that can remove that reproach. Is the only one that can fix whatever it is that needs to be fixed in my life. We're talking about worship. Our purpose, our essence of this gathering. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says, And walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. We have to be thankful. In the Old Testament, when you look, look at, in so many places, I was able to come up with 2 Chronicles chapter 30, 31, verse 2. When they have to go and give sacrifice, when everything in the land was messed up, when King Ezekiah was the one that was able to restore, remove all the idols, change everything in the house of God, and, but they have to give a sacrifice. He has to give instructions to the priest, to the ministers, to everybody, different, different sacrifices. Imagine if God wants to look into our lives, the things that we have committed. I'm sure maybe every second we have to be given sacrifice. But he paid the price. Jesus paid it all. How are we worshiping him? How are we acknowledging him in our lives? What it is that you think God cannot do for you. And he's asking you and I. If we can just release ourselves. If we can just humble ourselves. If we can just move closer to him. If we can just seek him more. And just do whatever he asks us to do. He says go ye. That is just the assignment. Because when you understand your worship with God then you will know that beloved says, let us come together. Let us reason together. Let me listen to your own idea. You listen to my own idea as a body of Christ and let's begin to lift up one another. It is time for us to understand that we are not supposed to put down one another. It is time for us to begin to understand that if we want to have a relationship with God, there has to be love. Because God is love. The relationship that you, we have with him is because he loves us. But how are we showing love to our brothers and sisters? If we cannot show love to ourselves that we can see each other now, how can we show love to God? If we cannot humble ourselves to one another and listen, appreciate the grace of God in each other's lives, Rejoice when your brothers and your sisters, when they are rejoicing. That I have come here to worship. You have come here to worship. I have not come here to look at what you wear. To look at what you have. To look at the car that you are driving. Because we are all one in the sight of one God. What is your worship? The book of Psalm that we read today, verse 2 says, He lifted us out of the slimy pit. Our dirtiness, our filthiness. We don't even know anything. You think it's by your own intelligence? You think it's by your own knowledge? You think it's because you are able to read that book? Or God has given you that good job? He took us out. He washed us. He renewed us. Even not for the grace of God. 
I was praying yesterday with my kids and I said, the people on the street that we see, that you think they are homeless, that you think they are nobody, don't ever try it. You have to show love. You have to understand that it's just by the grace of God. If you're able to understand that it's by the grace of God that you're able to do what you do, then we'll be able to acknowledge that one who has given us that ability. We'll be able to acknowledge that one that took us out of mud. He set our feet on a rock and gave us a firm place to stand. It says he put a new song in our mouth. A hymn of praise to God. That many will see in our lives and they will fear God. They will fear you. When you understand your worship. Demons will see you. They will tremble. Sickness will see you. Your body will not be able, they will not be able to stand. Because your body will be too hot for them. The Holy Ghost fire, the power of God will not allow them to stay. Because you understand your worship. You know when to go before that sacred place and speak to your God. You know what time and when he is speaking to you. You know when he's telling you to go and do this. Go, speak to her. Go, talk to her. You will not be afraid what man will do unto you because you understand worship. If the people of the world, if they can believe in their God so much that they take a lot of risk, we children of God were so fearful. But they understand their worship. When you go to the Chinese or the buffet, you will see their Buddha, you see them putting fruits, putting all type of fruits. They can even put chicken or put some snacks, you know, cookies, in front of their God. Because they understand. They understand. What are we giving to him? They know when they feed their God, then people will rush in. We all go there. We're not afraid to eat buffet, but sometimes we're afraid to eat in each other's house because we don't understand worship. If you understand worship, you just have to lay your hands upon that food. You don't even have to touch it. Just speak a word. If you understand worship, you will wake up in the middle of the night when they come, say, Dolly, they will come. But by the time you begin to decree, you stand with authority. And you begin to speak to that situation. You begin to rebuke them. And when they see you in the morning, they might even be the first one to call you that morning because they want to know if you don't understand what has happened. And when they call, you begin to speak into their lives. You begin to encourage them. You begin to speak good words into their lives. They will tremble. They will bow before your God. Why do we go to an Indian restaurant and we don't fear? We eat their masala chicken, we eat everything. But when you enter, you will see them. They will even be speaking, evangelizing. They will have stickers, they will have some things for you to pick. We go, we take fortune cookies, we do this, we do that. How many times have you think about it? How they are doing this fortune cookie? I want to start doing something. Maybe let me buy snacks and begin to write scriptures into it and begin to give it out. And begin to speak into somebody's life. Why don't you let us wake up and let us understand our worship. That I'm not coming here to sing because of anybody. I know when I sing, he understands me. Because he gave me that voice. No matter what people say about my voice, he gave it to me. 
and he wants me to use it to his glory. Because when I do it, his blessing will come into my life. The purpose of our worship is to receive from him. You don't need to stress. You don't have to struggle. Because when you understand your worship, he will reward you. It might not be where you want it, but when you are consistent, doing what he asks you to do, in due season, he will bring it to fusion in your life. Verse 10 of that same Psalm 40 says, it says, I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. We do not hide it. I believe that. That wherever we go, we tell people about the God that we serve. How did you get that job? It's not, I, I don't know. But God did it for me. But do you know, for the past few weeks now, I've been coming to church, I've been, you know, cleaning the house of God. I've just even been buying something. Sometimes maybe you feel like you want to evangelize, you don't know how to do it. Go before God. Ask him for direction. It could be, maybe you use clothes. That you use shoes or something that you just pack and you begin to give it out. By doing that, you think he will not, he will not give you more clothes? You think he will not give you what you need? Because you are doing what he's asking you to do. You think he will not put more money in your pocket? You think if he asks you, give that remaining one dollar in your pocket, just give it to him. Give it to her. She needs it right now. And you ask God, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? But if you understand your worship, if you understand that he was the one that provided it for you yesterday, he provided it today. So of a truth that you are still alive, he's going to provide it for you tomorrow. Obedience comes with worship. When we are faithful, when we are not concealed with the love that God has given to us, that we are able to share it. We are able to share it. We are not like those hypocrites or those people that will honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. The Bible makes us to understand, Jesus Christ said that they worship me in vain. Book of Matthew chapter 15. It says their teachings are bought rules taught by men. I'm not talking about any church or anything, but there are so many churches, it's all about doctrine. Don't do this, don't do that. But their heart is far away from God. That is not a true worship. God is telling us that now is the time. On campus, now is the time. Wherever you find yourself, now is the time. Because you understand your worship. And the more we do it, you'll be surprised how it will continue to multiply you. It will continue to give you more wisdom. It will give you more knowledge. It will give you more understanding. I have seen students that all their time is all church, is about God. But when it's exam examination time, they will just be like, the Lord just took me to that chapter. And all the questions. Or your teacher, your instructor, your professor will just love you for whatever reason. That even when you are late with this homework uh, project or something, if they don't accept it from everybody, you will just see that they will just bring yours. Something unique. Something peculiar. Something awesome. Something, you know, that is so marvelous. Outstanding. Will begin to manifest in our lives when we understand our worship. Romans 14, 11 says, As surely as I live, says the Lord, it says every knee will bow before me and every tongue will acknowledge God. We have to continue to acknowledge God in our attitude, in everything that we do. Because the attitude of gratitude is the only product that can come by our spiritual altitude. 
the attitude of our appreciation, the understanding of our worship, the relationship that we can build with God can only come or can only be produced by the level of our spiritual altitude. The height that every day God renew me, God refresh me. It doesn't come easy. I'm not standing here today to tell you that it was just a joke. I will tell you that maybe I'm even the last person that I want to stand on the pulpit. I always think that I just want to be an activist. I want to be on the street, you know, let's do what we got to do. But God has a purpose. The same way God has a purpose for your life. It says, go ye and preach good news. Worshippers, we just don't enjoy God's wonderful presence alone. We have to invite people. Come and see. Come. If they refuse, go on your knees and continue to remember them in prayer. If they don't understand, speak to God concerning them. Because we created a worship when we witness unto the unchurch. That look at me. I was like you before. I, w I was even worse than you. Things were not going right. I don't even know why I'm in school. I don't even know how this is happening. But since the day I started this journey, this journey of faith, God began to do something in my life. I'm not forcing you, but I just want you to try. You don't have to come to my church right now, but find a Bible-believing church close to where you live. Pray to God to lead you there. Many of us, we have businesses. Don't think God is sending those people to your shop, to your office, just because of money. God is sending them to you for you to touch their lives. It is when you do that, that that money or whatever it is that you gain from it, then you can enjoy it. That is when God will multiply it. It's okay if they don't listen, but you have delivered what God has sent you to do. And you will go back to me and say, Daddy, I've done my part. Do the rest. Because we have no power of our own. Amen. There is a quote which says, it says, worship is the goal of evangelism. And evangelism is the fruit of worship. David wrote, says, he put a new song in my mouth. If you want God to begin to put a new song in your mouth. If you want to be like prophet Isaiah that says, I saw the Lord, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne. And his robe filled the temple. My eyes have seen the king, the Lord of glory, and the Lord of hosts. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? Who will go for me? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Let us rise up on our feet. Just think. Look into your foundation. I heard in a story that my great great grandparents, they are idol worshippers. That even at a point, I began to receive revelations that I have to pray against that God. That they have served. Or maybe some are still serving. That there is a connection. In my life. To that deity. Maybe paraventure. This may be one of the things. That is not making you. To do. What God wants you to do. Like many a times. 
You will start that journey. But in the middle, you will just get stuck. And it will seem like people are mocking you. People are saying, why? Why is she carrying Bible? She has spent money. Do this, do that. They don't know that there is something that is foundational that has to live. And I pray for someone today. If God can have mercy for someone like me, that at a point I give up. At a point I felt like what is the purpose? What is the use of serving God? The only thing that kept me going was that I made up my mind that I'm not going to give my life to the devil. That I'm not going to sow my soul to the devil. Maybe this is what is affecting your worship. Why don't you begin to speak to God? Why don't you begin to commune with him? That I want to go out. I want to preach the gospel. I feel like praying with someone. But where is my testimony? Begin to speak to him. Because he called for our worship. He needs your worship. He want people to hear your testimony. He want them to see that transformation. That someone who cannot even afford three square meal. She's now the one that is feeding a whole community. There's someone that her siblings or his siblings were paying their phone bills, supporting them with their rent. They are now the one that is giving people down payment money. Hey, hey, hey. There's someone that failed this class, failed, 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 failed. He or she is now the one that is even tutoring people that need help. There's someone that they call barren. Barrenness does not have to be only fruit of the womb. Some people are barren spiritually. Some are barren in their relationship. Some are barren in their ministry or in their calling, in things that they lay their hands upon, in their finances. Some are barren concerning their health. If you want God to touch you today and you want to renew your worship with God please take a step of boldness and come outside and let our father in the Lord let him just pray for us that you know that I want to do it when I'm leaving the house, I'm like, God, I'm coming to meet with you. But I don't know what happens. When I get in the church, everything will just change. 
My mind will just be thinking about what am I going to wear, all the cares of life. He's in the house. He's in the house. His love encompasses our whole lives. When we put God at the center of our lives. When we submit to our Lord and Savior. When we acknowledge His Lordship. 